Right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. Welcome to your post-match press of Manchester City 2, Chelsea nil in the Carabao Cup away at the Etihad. Better from Chelsea, but not necessarily good enough. An excellent performance from the young left wing back slash midfielder, Lewis Hall. We're going to talk about him a little bit. The city keeper was the Etihad's man of the match, um, which tells you a lot, actually, about Chelsea being improved. And Chelsea were improved. It was two goals in four minutes from Manchester City. That was the difference essentially and you could you could argue there there was mistakes on both we're going to talk about it today but i think the headlines should be get the microphones up the headline should be chelsea improved chelsea have seen a bit more from certain players and we've seen how we can change more in matches as well it's another game okay get the microphone get them get yeah it's another game that we probably wouldn't need three days after the World Cup final. Look, man, it, it would be nice to have beaten City tonight. It would have been just the tonic. No one gave us a snowball's chance in hell. But Chelsea were okay, man. We were okay. Um, of course, the big talking points was Lewis Hall starting a left wing back and the likes of Amari Hutchinson on the bench, who sadly didn't get to come on. We turned to other players. But this is... um. This is the team we went with. We went with a 3-4-3. Three, uh, three. We had Edouard Mundy in goal with a back three of Kula Bali, Trev Chalaba, and Mark Kukurea. That's right, Mark Kukurea coming back at left centre-back. Spoiler! He was better. We had a midfield two of uh, Zakaria and um, Mateo Kovacic, which is pretty good. We all wanted to see Zaka well, Zakaria, Zakaria, I don't know how you say it. We all wanted to see him. Interestingly, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I mean, well, not that interestingly. I, you, know, you know what, man? For those of you who's watched my recent upload, I pretty much nailed this. I I said, like, and, and well, all the players that I said would feature featured, but there's five subs. I said Loftus-Cheek would be right wing back, or right back. I actually said right back. I said Lewis... Um, Lewis Hall. Actually, I think I absolutely nailed it. Did I nail it? I think I nailed it. Or did I have Loftus Cheek and a sweeper? Still, I had I had Lewis Hall starting Loftus Cheek, Amari Hutch. I had Amari Hutchison, but yeah. Anyway, anyway, I've, I'll stop uh, gassing myself up. I think I maybe did all right in the uh, in the predictions. We had a front three of Bruyer, uh, flanked by Hakim Ziyech, who I did not predict would start. I thought would be uh, Hutchison and Pulisic. So I nearly got the front three right. I just had a. Hutchison instead of Ziyech, um, which probably we all would have liked to have seen. Substitute appearances from Gallagher, Mount Sterling, Havertz, and interestingly, as Pilaqueta. I think we moved to a sort of back four. At times, we changed formations and shapes and stuff. Of course, it was a 4 3 3. No, it was a 4 2 3 1 from Manchester City with Ortega and Goal, who is probably their best performer on the day, up there with Mares. Uh, they had Lewis at right back, one of their youngsters, Gomez at left back. They had um, Laporte and Diash playing in the centre-back partnership, of course, centre-back partnership, of course, senior Ake comes on later. They, oh, they had loads of, you know, they had Rodri and Gundogan in midfield, man. Um, are they, yeah, yeah, did I say Laporte earlier with the midfield? Laporte and Diaz, yeah. Yeah, so they, they had so, so much seniority there. They had Gundogan or Rodri in midfield, and then they brought on Phillips, a £50 million pound CDM, with Bernardo Silva. Jack Grealish played left wing, Mares played right wing, of course, they were both very good. And uh, Cole Palmer, their, their sort of wonder kid, he played in behind Alvarez, who's very, very good. Look, both teams made seven changes for this game. The difference being we're away from home, and Man City have got better players than Chelsea, and Man City are, what, seven years into the Guardiola project, they were always going to be heavy, heavy favourites, and, um, yeah, man, do you know what I mean, so, and and had it not been for some great saves from Ortega and some couple of moments, you know, Lewis Hall could have had two goals on the day, we had a few goal mouth scrambles, and for context, it's, Man City were at home and they had 18 shots, 1-8, we had 15 shots, so we had three less, and there was a couple, I think, that were then ruled offside after a scramble. So we pretty much, like, you know, nearly matched them blow for blow in terms of offensive actions. And two of our shots were from young Lewis Hall. 
um, who could have scored both. I'm not going to say he should have because he did really well to get him into uh, those positions. Certainly one of them when he cuts onto his weaker foot, it's a bit of a weak shot. But just for him to be in that position, you've got to give him kudos. In fact, um, Sky Sports put up this graphic. Let me just quickly show it to you now for context of how good this youngster is. Um, Lewis Hall was in this game. There you go. He, he was a. Uh, this is from Sky Sports. So he was um, first four shots on target, dribbles, uh, dribble success, duels one, and possession one, which is pretty darn impressive. Both like defensive, you know, midfield progressive with the dribbles and offensive with shots on target. Really, really good from the lad. Um, and he could have had two goals, of course. But we had other chances, you know, shots, like I said, goal mouse scrambles at the end. Uh, we thought we scored, but it was offside. <sighs> I'll take you, I want to talk about player performances, but I'll take you through it. You know, we had some cards in this game. Koulibaly, Trevor Chalabar, Cesar Aspilicueta at the end, getting in a ruck with Jack Grealish. But the two goals came in the 53rd and the 58th minute. It was about four minutes apart. One was a free kick um, that we needlessly conceded. And uh, Riyad Mahrez, with great technique, the left boot puts it in the top right corner. But the wall, basically, Koulibaly doesn't jump. Koulibaly did a couple of good things in this game, but he did some bad stuff as well. I, he, If he had it jumped, that goal doesn't go in. It's not 1-0 to Man City. Bearing in mind, at that point, we could have already been ahead. Um, the next goal, uh, yes, people are also blaming Koulibaly a little bit as well, but I'm not entirely sure it's completely down to him without watching it back. Please let me know in the comments what you think. But Julian Alvarez... Great work from the uh, Argentinian young striker, uh, sweeping the ball, cross-field pass, and then following up uh, the chance that he created just by scrambling in the box and sweeping up a rebound from Eduardo Mundi, a save. And uh, it's a, it's great from him all round offensively. So 2-0, and at that point, you're you're worrying. You know, we make loads of changes. We make um, f we make five changes, essentially. Um, we... we Bronze, yeah, Sterling, Mount, Gallagher, Asby, and Kai Havertz taking off Zakaria, Chalaba, Lewis Hall, and Ziesch and Bruya. Um, and yeah, we go for it. It's like fair play. Do you know what I mean? Like I said, we have the shots. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't embarrass ourselves in this, in this game. Um, in fact, there's stuff that, you know, is positive. I mean, obviously a win would have been lovely, but it would have been also highly unlikely <laughs> but the fact that we had these shots on target and we had you know these performances from lewis hall who um for me like you know I i'm gonna say he was my man of the match but eduard mendy in goal he he did make a couple of really good saves um he's actually got a really high uh, score ranking on who scored uh, possibly the highest chelsea player which might be fair he did do something early doors where he he nearly gets, you know, he gets pressed and he doesn't release the ball quick enough. And I'm just thinking every freaking game, Mendy, you know, every day, every game he does that, literally. Just, just, just release the ball. I know you're playing against a super well-tuned pressing machine away from home, but still, just, just clear your lines, man. Uh, Kukurea, um, yeah. A lot better, man. That tackle he made when Kovacic, um, he bailed Kovacic out in the box. He, he gets his foot on a ball and, and clears it literally before they score. Um, I think it was a, uh, Nizar Kinsella that was um, saying this is the kind of game that suits him. Obviously, he's like uh, La Masia uh, trained, obviously, the Barcelona Academy. Playing out of press, presses is quite good. He was And he was doing that well in this game. Koulibaly wasn't my favourite. Chalaba, you know not necessarily great either and sp comes in and you know the most notable thing at the end i saw as the to do was just start a fight with jack Grealish, um which is fine but um you know other than that kovacic was serviceable in the midfield did some good dribbles out of the press but really nothing too exciting i was i was impressed with Zeka uh, zakaria certainly in the first half i do think maybe he's unfit i reckon that's why he doesn't play I reckon his fitness, because he did look gassed out. But that first half, he was very, very impressive. Um, though the, the man of the first half for me was easily young Lewis Hall. Uh, Bruyat started very well. He starts like really high octane, like runs around and, you know, he's very, very physical. And, you know, he took to, he took a shot on really, really early on when he had two players on the right. But I, I get it, like just, you know, he wants to, he's a striker, he's goal hungry, but eventually he'll have to start playing people in. Um... 
So it was he, he did fade Bria, but he started very well. Um, but yeah, Zakaria and Hall and probably Kukurea were my standouts. Pulisic did start right. I saw some people giving him grief, grief on social media. I don't know why. I feel like he was fine. He was one of the bright sparks in the first half just because he's getting involved, you know. Loftus-Cheek, he's not been the same. Um, he's playing a right wing, rack and right wing back, though. It, you know, he's such a utility guy. This is just... This really demonstrates Chelsea's great issue with um with right back and you know we, we need a proper reese james style alternative like kukure is great if we're going to play back four because he can play left back really well and so can chill well you know it's all it's all good it's all good but uh, you know as p it's just not we need that dynamism and and loftus cheek he he wants to it's great if he's allowed to invert but you know, Mount comes on, he needs scores. Gallagher comes on, you know, it, it's good. Ziyech did do better. A lot of people were, you know, giving him grief, grief again on social media. Um, largely probably because everyone wanted to see Amari Hutchison. But he did do a couple of good bits. Uh, he did that great sort of turn on the uh, byline as well. Um, I think it was the byline where he roasted the opposition player. And we made changes and we went for it. And, uh, you know, we had we had more tackles than them, understandably, understandably, rather, because we had less of the ball. But we had over 45% possession, which is pretty good for way the Etihad had, over 45. Um, and we had um, more dribbles and stuff as well, which is pretty, pretty, pretty good. We had more, we had double more dribbles than them. So we were trying to play out of the press with the ball at our feet. Now... It's a frustrating loss. It's another loss. It's three out of four. But, you know, it's a loss. It's a way at the Etihad in the night where Arsenal have been eliminated at home by Brighton 3-1. By three goals to one. Tottenham have been eliminated by Nottingham Forest. We were eliminated by the champions at the Etihad. So... I get it, you know, it's, the, it's not the most exciting trophy as well, but I'm not feeling that shit about it because I had saw positive stuff, really. You know, provided, provided we take the positives out of this and actually move it into the next game, uh, you know, then that's all good. We'll have to see what happens. Of course, we've got Newcastle before the World Cup. A good result there would go a long way. And perhaps... Seeing Amari Hutchison and Lewis Hall play again, um, you know, I don't think he's going to start Lewis Hall in a must-win, well, a really, you know, high-pressure win, needing to win game straight after an Etihad had run out. But just seeing them on the bench, keeping them as options, they've shown that they can, you know, play well in a really, really uh, high-pressure atmosphere. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for liking and subscribing. It means a lot. And, uh, yeah, man, positive. So... We move. We're going to be all right. Peace.